looking for a miracle. How many looking for a miracle? Let's go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, open up doors up at home. Put the windows up at the house. Open that front door. Go down your driveway. And this is you go swag back and forth. Let your neighborhood know that you believe and you're gonna receive.
All you gotta do is just believe it and receive it. That He will perform it today. Can you believe that this morning? Don't you believe that this morning? Hallelujah. How many know He is good? How many of you can say, God, you are good? You are good and you've been better to me than I've been to myself. Oh, when I think on the goodness of what he has done for you and me, oh, I can't think of enough. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. Even if I could try, I couldn't praise you enough.
unto us week by week and day by day and even moment by moment as we share in light of the realities of what's going on we thank God for showing up we thank God for being present in our lives and his presence means something it is so significant that we're able to be upon the the foundation of faith that God has given unto us. And I pray that God keep my mind for a moment because I am so arrested by so much, by so many things that are occurring. And it's almost as if it's a righteous revolt, a righteous revolt. You know, all over the nation, all over the world, in fact, for that matter, all over the country, in every village, just yes, about in every city, people are protesting, marching. They are in 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 an effort to bring about change. They are protesting in a way that has never been protested before. I mean, numbers are, are record breaking. Even in Richmond on the other day, over 5,000 men show up to protest racial injustice. All over the world, New York City, California, you know, Germany, Spain, England, and even right here in Fredericksburg. Every day, people are protesting, people are marching, people are allowing their voices to be heard that change is not coming but change is right now and as we look on every news station as we glimpse at every time we um, see a, 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 a report 
all we see is how the masses of these young people and of all races and colors and religion are behind this, what some people call a movement. And I know that the question comes to the powers to be and even to some of us who sit on the sideline is how long is this marching going to go on? How, how long will this protesting go on? How, how long will they continue to block the streets and, and close off interstates and hold up signs? And, and some people saying enough is enough that, that, that it's, it's been done, it's been said that the marchers ought to go home, that the marchers ought to leave, that they've had enough publicity. Well, I'm here to let you know, as well as let the marchers know, don't you stop marching. Don't, don't you put down that banner. Don't you put down that poster. Don't you take off that t-shirt because God is allowing your voices to be heard and your faces to be seen in light of all the injustice that have been going on for years. And because your presence is so, so, so overwhelmingly visible, it creates and it disturbs the consciousness of our country, the consciousness of our political officials, the consciousness of our government officials, and yes, it disturbs the consciousness of even our police officers. In effort, when we are in a position to be able to stand up in protest, to stand up in protest in terms of what we are experiencing, it gives credence to the foundation upon which we stand. No, marching is not yet over, but yet it is to come to a place where we'll be able to effect change by the steps you take and the banners you hold up. I don't want to be political this morning, but I believe that God moves in a social circle, God moves in a political circle, and God is moving in a spiritual circle, wrapped up in this movement like never before. Even in the Bible, you read it during your quiet time, Joshua chapter 6, it talks about how the people of God had been frustrated, had been held back, had been kept away from destiny and promise for so long. And when they get to the place where they can see the promised land, the Bible said that Joshua and the people of God gazed out and saw the great promised land and knew what God had promised them, knew the freedom that they would have to be able to be a people, to be able to be a nation. And because of that inward desire, they were ready. They were ready. I don't know what I'm talking to today, but when God shows you your destiny, gives you a clip of what he promised you, give you a clue to what your children will become, can't no power on earth hold you down, can't no source, can't no law, can't no rules, can't no regulations keep you from becoming. I wish I had a witness in here today. They looked and they saw the promised land. And they saw, they saw with, with, with unusual um, perception that the land flowing with destiny. Your granddaddy, my granddaddy, your grandmother saw it. But they couldn't go in. But, but Joshua and this generation saw it. They say, this is what God promised us. But however, they looked and the city of Jericho was surrounded by walls, tall, big walls, walls that were 13 feet high, 14 feet wide, and had a satirical tower standing on top, 28 feet in the air. The, the walls were six feet thick. It was built for military strategy that nobody could come in and nobody could overtake what was going on behind the walls of Jericho. And Joshua and the people wondered to themselves, how are we going to get to 
people's freedom? How are we going to be able to experience the promise if these walls are so tall and so thick and so big that the historian said it took almost 400 years for Jericho to build that kind of wall. But yet the people of God was on the outside and they said we want what's on the other side of the wall. I don't know, beloved, but even in our lives we have to be careful that when God is moving us, when God is growing us, when God is helping us, when God is leading us, we cannot allow the obstacles that are in our way to make us fearful when we want to turn back. No, when you see an obstacle, that's time for you to rise up and say it must be something to this thing. It must be something on the other side. It must be something that I've got to get through so that I can get what God wants me to have. These, these, these walls have been built for almost 500 years. And, 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 and might I say, you know, as we live in this generation, you want to know why, why, why they're not stopping? Because the walls are so big. Yeah. And, and, and they've been building for about 400 years. <laughs> I mean, walls of racism, walls of discrimination, walls of, of injustice, walls of, 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 of sexism, walls of cultural differences, walls of economic and social, political, and even spiritual that divide us. You know, walls are built just to keep people out, just to keep people away from the freedom that's going on inside the walls. That's why I wouldn't have about our country, we might be reaping what we've been sowing because our president wanted, I wish you could feel me, our president wants to build walls, but God wants to tear down walls. Our president wants to erect walls that will keep people out. But beloved, I don't care who you are today, God is raising up a generation that said if you put up a wall, we gonna tear it down. We gonna stone by stone in here because you got some stuff in your life. You got some walls in your life that the enemy has been trying to keep you and press you down, but the devil is a liar. You got the same walls of depression. You got to leave my mind. Walls of loneliness. You got to let me go. Walls of project mentality. I find it in the name. I need some help in here. God Holy Spirit coming in your house. I don't know what your marriage look like, but there may be a wall of jealousy, a wall of mistrust, a wall of hurt and pain. It's time for you to tear those walls down. Don't let the enemy destroy your family. Don't let the enemy make you think you're better than your spouse. Don't make the enemy think that you can make it by yourself. The devil is a liar. What God don't let nobody tear it down. Oh my God, some single people out there. I don't want to leave you out. Single ladies, single men, you better make certain that you don't allow nobody to hinder you based on your singleness. Now God got blessings for you. God got promises for you. It may be without a man. It may be without a woman. Don't you know God can bless you by yourself? sons and you trying to push them don't push them, leave them alone and say God bless them walls are built to, 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 to keep people out um, 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 this, this, this country we're living in got walls all around us. If you've been black in America, then you're over five years old. And you didn't seen the walls. Now y'all act like y'all don't believe it. You, you take your little child to the park and you got all kind of folk working, riding the, you know, playing with the, the, the toys and in the park. You, you bring your little black kid in that park and got them by the hand and let them go. I guarantee you, 
that folk will start leaving out accident and before you know it, your little dark child, your little colored child will be in there by themselves talking about, I got the whole part to myself. Oh, beloved, it ain't just your part, it's everybody's part. They just don't like you because of the color of your skin. That all has to come down from kindergarten school to grade school to junior high school all the way up. Bible says that, that, that they saw these humongous walls and they wondered how they gonna get to the other side. <laughs> ah, beloved, listen, listen, listen. Not only, not only um, um, those of us who are are actively involved in this movement, you know. Um, I was, I was, I was. Talking to um, a white pastor friend of mine. Yeah, I got I got all colored, all color friends. Yeah, yeah. I went to Old Dominion University <laughs> back in the day. They tell me it's a little brown in there, but but anyway, you know, we talked to this white pastor friend of mine, and he he asked me. He said, um, um, um. What, what does the black community um, need from us? Um, I like to say that again. He said, during this movement, during this, what, what does the black community need from us as a white church? I said, well, let me ask you a question. What can the white church do? to help themselves deal with the black community. In essence, it's a two-way question. It's not what y'all can do for us, it's what we can do for each other to help eradicate the, the, the racism and the systematic racism that's been brought up, not only in the world, and I, I might get kicked off of Facebook for this, but let me let you in on a little secret. Racism is just not in our government, just not in our police and just not in our school system, but racism is in our church, is in the Christian organization. If you are a black church, there are certain doors that seem to be locked sometimes. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's gonna make you uncomfortable, but it's the truth. Listen, 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 that, 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 that eulogy for George Ford, I, I like that. That, that white pastor that got up and and he, he challenged the white church. Well, let me say Caucasian. No, I'm going to say white. Just like African Americans and some folks say black. You know, it's, it's, we talk about the same thing. But anyway, he, he challenged the white church saying, do not be silent. He challenged them he said, he said, I'm here because I'm supposed to be here. He said, I'm white. I pastor a white, predominantly white church, but I'm supposed to be here because liberation for you all is liberation for everybody. And he challenged, I didn't and I will, he challenged every white Christian, every white church, whether evangelical, whether fundamentals, whether Methodist, whether Baptist, Catholic Jew, he challenged them, don't be silent on this issue, but raise your voice and be what Christ would be. Somebody say, WWJD, what would Jesus do? Jesus would go down in history and say, I'm here to bring liberty to those who are oppressed, to lift up those who have been pushed down, to break the yoke and make life easy. Make it fair. God, God, God wants, wants us to be about the business. Let, let, me, let me let y'all, I'm, 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 I'm done. To the Christian church, particularly, you know, our church, this movement will go on with us without us. You know, this generation out here, this Joshua generation, they, 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 they don't really
really care what you think of them. They, they, don't, they don't really care what your perspective of them. They expecting us to join them in our struggle. The church has always been in the struggle of civil rights. But because we got to a place where some of us got nice jobs and living in better homes and driving better cars, we forget that it was just one generation ago where projects was our whole rooftop and roaches was our company and one bathroom was the place that everybody had to use. Don't you forget where you come from that when God raises you up to a level of comfortability, you are able to respond by helping somebody else. They said we got we got to go. We got to get to the promised land. You, know, you, you read that story. It, it, it talks about it. It said that Joshua got the plan from God. The strategy from God. He, he, he said, I want you to get the, the ark. <laughs> of the covenant which represents the church and the presence of God he said he said I need I need the priests and, and the Levites the pastors the bishops the doctors I need them to grab the ark I, I need them to lift up my presence and, and, and be in the forefront of what we're about to do yeah, that's a challenge to those of us who say we are called, who say we are anointed, who say that God is doing something in our life. If you've been called by God, it's now time for us to take the forefront. He said, yeah. he said take, 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 take the Ark of the Covenant. And the Bible said he had the priest holding it. The praises around him. Yeah. The army. <laughs> and he said, for six days, I'm done. He said, I want you to just march around the wall. They did it, and they sat down. Some of them wonder how long we're going to do this. First day, second day, third. How, how many days has it been this marching going on around the world? How many days? How many days? I, 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 over 20 some days. Folks said, isn't that enough? Isn't that enough? No, no, no. You don't stop marching yeah. until God says so. You, you don't stop protesting until God says so. You don't stop raising your voice until God says so. Six days. They marching with the signs, and, you know, around that wall. And the Bible said that on the seventh day, and I ain't God for number seven. I, number seven is the day of completion. That's why you got to be in the Lord's presence on the seventh day. The seventh day is not a magical day. It's a holy day. It's, it's a day when God steps in and kicks up his feet and says, everything I commission will happen. On the seventh day, the priests got that ark on their shoulders and the voices behind them, and they started marching. Marching around the walls. I don't know who I'm talking to the day, but you better learn how to get up out of your seat. Get up out of your place of complacency. Get up out of your seat of comfort and begin to walk. Begin to march. Fredericksburg, don't stop marching. Spotsylvania, don't stop marching. New York City, Richmond, don't stop marching. Texas, oh, don't stop marching. I was in the Iowa the other day. It was 15 people just right foot. They were marching, holding signs. I rolled out my window. I said, don't y'all stop marching. Point to somebody and tell them every step, you're getting stronger. Every step, fear is coming over the enemy. Every step, the devil takes two back. Keep on marching. The Bible says that Joshua said on the seventh day, he said, shout. I said, shout. He said, shout. And they lifted their voices. They blew their horns. And all of a sudden, the walls came tumbling down. I wish I was in a church that was full of people. I will tell you right now, shout, shout. 
be great things. I love it. Expect great things. Expect the great things.
listen, beloved. We are grateful to God. Thank you for giving. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, there's no drama. You can receive Christ right where you are. It's just a matter of you accepted him as the Lord, the Christ that died for you. And I pray right now that if you're listening, that you would repeat after me, God, thank you for your salvation in Jesus Christ. I accept him as my Lord into my heart. Help me now to become all you created me to be in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer, beloved, you are a child of God. Welcome to the family of God. Listen, if you need a church, you can yet join and be a part of the land of promise. Just go on your app, go on your stream right now and just type, I want to be a member, I want to join, I want to be a part. Somebody will contact you today in a few moments. Do that because we are ready for God to do what God says. A great increase shall come and overtake us. And we're ready for it. I want to give a shout out to one of our young members. Uh, um, Dream. Dream had surgery um, the other day. And the surgery went well. And God brought her out of it. And we want to thank God for this wonderful young lady. She's had so many surgeries, but God is raising her up so that she can get everything that's promised to her. Thank God for our teen and youth vacation Bible study this past week. It was such a success on Zoom and Facebook Live. Thank God for our committed children leaders and our youth pastor. We thank God for him sharing in such a powerful way. Stay connected to us. Check out your website, Facebook Live. Look for the email. Beloved, stay safe. The corona has not gone anywhere. Keep yourself covered. And stay safe. I love you. Proud to be your pastor. In Jesus' name.